Hey, I think I'll try and do a little NaNoWriMo rant here. Um, I haven't been involved in uh, the the program, whatever you call it, the site, for a few years, but I, I found a lot of value on it in the past. I didn't know about last year's controversy until uh, a couple months ago I just heard about it. I was thinking about doing it again sometime in the future, but this is more or less a reaction to, or a, a second, if you will, to... Steve Donahue's excellent post about the current controversy. First, let me just quickly go over my history with it. I originally found the book, actually a used copy of the book, I think in Half Price Books. Uh, when would that have been? 2009, 2011 or something like that? The, the founder of the program put out a book writing... NaNoWriMo's National uh, Writing Month, something like that. It's the 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 thing is to write a fifty thousand word manuscript, complete fiction novel manuscript in thirty days, thirty one days in the month of November. Uh, but I had the book, so I did it on my own in like an April or a May or something like that. Finished a book. So the first novel I ever wrote, except for when I was like 18 or 19, I wrote a, a novel, a handwritten novel. But this is the first thing I ever typed out and finished and was able to give to other people to read for feedback and things like that and to revise. Then in a couple, uh, couple years after that, I did two more in the actual month and, and did what they call winning which is to actually complete a novel. I think I actually even paste at least once I pasted my complete novel into the window to get the official word count. And oh, I was going to get my phone and screenshot it, but I'm not going to do it because I don't want to go on and on with this. But uh, they came out with a statement in favor of AI. And I'll link to, if you're interested in this at all, you've probably already seen Steve Donahue's video on it. And I'm just doing this really just for my own satisfaction um, to second it because I don't want to be silent on it because I really am disturbed, not disturbed even, but angered by AI and angered when I see defenses of AI. And what I mean by AI is generative AI, what they call generative AI which is much different than spell check or grammarly or, or like you know, or, or even like, uh, you know, research kind of purposes where it'll, where you can use it to summarize a, a long text to read for your own purposes, that kind of thing. Maybe it has some uses there. I know that programmers find it very useful to, to give it instructions to, to, to fix code, to find bugs in code. But when it comes to generative AI, which is, you know, the... It's most prevalent in, well, I see it mostly in, in images, uh, you know, which have just ruined Facebook with its stupid AI images of, uh, you know, just all over the place, just, and, and people using uh, generative AI, which is, uh, which is LLM, I believe it's called, large language models, where they've taken basically every piece of writing in a human existence that they can get their hands on these AI companies and fed it into a meat grinder and, and, and spew it back out so that you can use it to generate prose, readable, allegedly, prose. And the people that are in favor of it, and, you know, if, if this video gets any traction, which it probably won't, you know, they'll be, you'll see them in the comments, will say, well, you don't understand. Once it's better, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be better. Now it's not good, but it will be better. But I don't care if it gets better or not. I'm I'm a human being. I am team human beings. I don't ever want to read anything that somebody didn't even have the respect for my time to write. Why should I read it? If you're writing a book, if if you're writing a Western and you have five ideas for your Western and you type your little ideas into the, into the AI machine and, and 
generate it out at 2,000 words at a time or whatever and paste it all together, I, why would I bother to read that? I could do that myself. I really don't think any of these people, and I've never heard any of these people extolling who are, who are, who are extolling AI and the whole idea of it, never really hear them praising specific works. Because nobody wants to read this shit. Nobody is going to read this shit. Why would you? Why would I read someone else's AI novel? I could, if I wanted to read AI novel, I could just generate my own. It's ridiculous. So anyway, NaNoWriMo. Did a very strange thing. Uh, on one of their one of their press releases or something in defense of AI and saying that they're not going to object to people using AI in the program for the contest, which is coming up soon because it starts in November. And that's, that's one thing. If they'd just taken it that far, fine, whatever, stupid. I, I, I know a lot of companies, a lot of forums, a, a lot of... Uh, YouTubers that I watch, not not booktubers, but other YouTubers, writing tubes, and people. I just I just finished watching a a YouTube video by a writing channel that I really like, and he's talking about how to use AI to write your books. It's just repulsive to me. It's just you're don't be on Skynet's team. I'm not on Skynet's team. I'm not on the, I'm not on the side of the Matrix, and I don't understand why people would be. Some people seem to be chomping at the bit to dehumanize ourselves. You know, there's that quote from, who's it by? Uh, oh, I didn't I didn't put anything together because I'm just so mad. Um, Tom Waits, you know, has that quote a few years ago about how they're degrading the quality of our suffering. Well, that's just ratcheted up with AI. Anyway, NaNoWriMo has, they even went to the second level of just saying we're not going to object to people doing this, but then they, then they tried to turn around and say you are actually a bigot, you are actually an elitist if you object to AI because these, these, uh, these generative AI programs help disabled people, quote unquote, that's their word, they use disabled people and and, and marginalize people, which I don't understand how that works because you have to pay to use these programs. Uh, ChatGPT is, is, they only give you a few words a day. You're gonna, you have to buy a subscription, which you don't have to buy to type on Google Docs. Google Docs is free. A piece of paper and a pen is free. You know, it's also insulting to people who might be quote-unquote marginalized or quote-unquote disabled to say that they are not able to write because of this, every single one. Um, anyways, that's, that's how they t tried to turn it around, to try and preemptively shut down any objections to AI. I went to their Twitter tonight. They have their... their, their I had to pause and cough. Um... And hit my head against the wall. Their Twitter has a pinned tweet uh, about their partnership with, um, tell us the name of it. I'm going to have to look it up. Oh, it's not a, a pinned tweet, but it is their most recent tweet on the NaNoWriMo Twitter feed. Um, it is, I'll just read it to you. I'm not going to show it to you. Join us for our last event in the Pro Writing Aid Edit to Excellence series tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is from August 28th. And then there's a big banner here for a webinar, How to Edit More Effectively with Technology, Wednesday, August 28th, Pro Writing Aid. So Pro Writing Aid is a company that's like Grammarly. It has its, its uses. Uh, you, you pay for it, but, you know, it's, it's like a high-level grammar tool like Grammarly, which can be very useful. They don't really... Um, don't replace a human editor, but it can really clean up your prose quickly. You know, find things that uh, um, spell check doesn't find, like um, the mis misplaced words and stuff. It also gives you a lot of nonsense 
Um, well, I don't specifically know about pro writing aid, but Grammarly gives you a lot of non a lot of nonsense suggestions, but it'll, it'll correct things like you know if you've got the wrong version of its it apostrophe s when it should be its that kind of thing. It'll catch you know things that spell check doesn't always catch. You know that's one level of AI, but it also has the generative AI pro writing aid does so. I, so this appears to me to be Nano uh, You know, they have they haven't backed down yet. They they posted this this press release a few days ago, and they have not made a statement yet. And as Steve Donahue says, you know, they're probably going to come out at some point saying, you know, we've heard you, we've listened, um, you know, and to that bullshit corporate uh, apology. Although it appears they're not even going to bother to do that. I think they're doubling down because it seems to be they have sponsorships. You know, these companies that are trying to really save because AI is tanking. It's it had, a, um, if you look at the stock market today, it's a 2% two, two correction or something like that. Nothing to worry about. If you're a stock person, don't worry about it. Don't panic. Uh, the stock market's up a lot, but it's a correction most, mostly related to from the news reports I've read, I should be careful with my wording because I don't know. It's just I'm just, just another idiot who reads stuff online. About companies starting to realize they need to dump all this AI BS, and you know, so these investors are are, are shedding some of this AI stuff because they know it doesn't work. It's a big Ponzi. It's a big. It's smoke and mirrors. You know, it's not. People haven't figured out a way to monetize it yet. But NaNoWriMo as apparently taking sponsorships from companies like Pro Writing Aid, you know, and, and of course there's the other uh, uh, theory that people have brought up, which I don't know that much about, but it's it's certainly very plausible, given NaNoWriMo's history of lying um, and trying to cover things up in the past. You can, again, I'll refer you back to Steve's video if you're interested in that about the scandal last year about the predator scandal and how they tried to cover that up when they had a predatory uh, mod volunteer mod uh, situation that they didn't handle professionally uh, and tried to cover up and and uh, so one of the things you can do with the NaNoWriMo uh, contest, if, if you decide to do it, is you can take your work and you could paste it into their into their site uh, so they can uh, accurately assess your word count. And, of course, they always say they don't keep the the words, they don't keep your work, they don't share your work or anything like that. But why, why would you believe them? You know, they take money from ProWriting Aid. They, for no absolutely re reason they commit this unforced error of of not only saying not only saying what a lot of companies are doing and a lot of people are doing and saying oh we're neutral on ai which i think is too far i think you should not be neutral on it i think you should condemn it <coughs> um but they you know, turned around, they did that thing. They did that, uh, as Steve says, I keep quoting him, and you should really, I should just put a, a post up saying, watch Steve's video about this, but, you know, they they went all 2015 on, on us, and, you know, and and just accused anyone who dares uh, disagree with them about AI uh, as being ableist and racist. And they didn't say racist, but, you know, ableist and, and elitist. So here we are in 2015. Uh, they're a little behind the curb, though, because they're just a small nonprofit and realize it's not 2015 anymore and people are kind of waking up to this bullshit. They don't, it doesn't work as well. It doesn't work as well to just reflexively call everything out as racist and, and sexist and ableist and marginalization. People are kind of tired of that stuff. So as someone who was like really got a lot of value out of the program, I mean, writing three novels based on its methods or the first draft of three different novels, you know, in a, in a period of maybe four years, um, 
a decade ago and thinking about it from t- you know it really doesn't work for the way I've been writing the last few years I like to write shorter things and I like to write longer things and I and I I, I like to keep my own pace I always uh, was a promoter of it even though some of my writing friends are, are were always sn- snobby about it thinking oh you think you just write a book in a month and all that I think it's it's biggest value is f- for people who who always wanted to write, which is many, 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 many people who never sit down to do it. And I think it makes a, a, a more appreciative reader if you see what work goes into just writing even a bad novel, even a bad novel that has a beginning, a middle, and an end in a month. It, it'll, cha- it'll change your perspective. So Steve, I, I don't think I'll be joining anything like this, but Steve is kind of interested in you know, in hearing what people want to do in terms of maybe making their own sort of alternatives. Uh, nobody on Twitter, nobody on uh, on BookTube that I've seen is really defending NaNoWriMo. Nobody's trying to reform it. People are just ready to move on now, especially after last year's scandal, I guess, which was news to me, so I don't know all the details of that, so I don't want to talk about it too much because I might get stuff wrong. But I think there's value in it, and you know, especially for people who are more social uh, and find value in motiv- motivated, like team sort of uh, building and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, using other people to keep them on, on track and doing like a, a support network. So I again, I will link to Steve's video on there, and maybe you can. I'm sure anybody watching this has probably already seen that. So. This is really just for my own entertainment, but isn't it all for my own entertainment? Um, you know, there might be something going on like that, or there might be other channels too. So, uh, if, if I find anything that's open to people, and if people are interested in hearing about it, I'll, I'll do a post on it at some point. But I wish you all luck, and I didn't want to let this go because it just gave me an opportunity to talk about how much I am. Uh, I'm saddened by any kind of excitement in the creative community about AI. Just do your own do your own writing. Even if it's worse, even if it doesn't make sense, at least it's done by a human being. You know, and maybe maybe looking back over the last few years, this is a bit speculative now. You know how things have gotten so sort of codified in the world of writing, starting with uh, Joseph Campbell and Star Wars. You know, Joseph Campbell uh, being an influence on Star Wars and then Save the Cat, you know, and then Sid Field and various, mostly screenwriters, but also leaking over into other kind of print, you know, people people have gotten so far into the, like, looking for the secret pattern to write a book and now maybe that's maybe in a certain way I have to think about this later on. Maybe that somehow leads to people thinking, well, all I have to do is find all the parts and put them in the right order. And maybe if there's a program that'll do that for me. But again, why do you want to read it? Think about why you want to read. I mean, when I read, I want to know about the person. If it's a book I like, I like to read more books by that same person. I like to learn about that person's history. Uh, I like to learn about that person's time period. What are you, what are you getting out of Chat ChatGP? I really don't think anybody's getting any, anything out of it, except they think that maybe it's a shortcut. Uh, it's not. I've played around with it enough just to see for my own, you know, interest, just to see if it's coherent or not. Uh, it's not. Um, even if it was, I wouldn't be interested in using it myself. I'd rather be a bad human writer than a great uh, robot writer. And I'd rather read a lousy book by a human with all his or her foibles and flaws and 
misunderstandings of the world and strange takes and just bizarreness and inability to f hit all the tropes. You know, all the things that uh, that people on big booktube uh, rail against. You know, they like those books that hit the tropes. I'd rather just read something messed up and quirky and, and strange and 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 f death to the machines. Well.